Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise and worship you for your goodness, love, and mercy. As creator of the world, you gave us life and breath. As preserver of all life, you provide for us day by day. As redeemer of all mankind, you show us your love in Christ. We praise you that the Lord is King and his spirit has been poured into our hearts. In Christ, we join the heavenly host to praise, to worship and to adore. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, praise be to your name, O Lord Most High. Amen. reading can be found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I wonder how many of you have heard of the form of artwork called marquetry. It involves the use of thin veneers of wood or other materials used to create intricate designs and patterns. It's a technique which has been used for centuries to create beautiful and unique pieces of furniture, pictures and other kinds of decorative objects. I happen to have a picture on the wall in our house which is made in this style. It was created to show the scene of the time when Jesus said the words you've he just heard from the Gospel according to Mark this morning. That's a picture of it on your screen. We come to the time in the earthly ministry of Jesus when children were brought to him so that he could lay hands on them and pray for them. On its own, that wasn't unusual. Jesus had become recognised as a distinguished rabbi. It would have been the most natural thing in the world for Jewish mothers to bring their children to be blessed by such a man. You heard, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. He then took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them and blessed them. You may well think, as I did, of the two potentially puzzling elements to this story. Firstly, why did the disciples try to keep the children away from Jesus? Secondly, what did Jesus mean when he said, let the little children come to me? We need to remember the children in Jesus' time were not necessarily regarded as special or particularly endearing, except to their own parents and family, of course. <coughs> in our time, we could well probably look on children as sweet little things. Maybe you've seen somebody holding a little child and, and smiled, maybe thinking how cute they are, so sweet, innocent, and yet, oh, so very, very wise. We sat in a cafe the other day, and in came a man and a woman pushing a pram. From the conversation we got involved in, they were first-time grandparents out for the first time with their first grandchild, all to themselves. Oh, and they looked so proud. It was a little boy. After sitting for a while, he became a, a little grumpy in that pram. They wanted him to settle down. He didn't. In the end, they took him out of the pram and he looked so pleased. He stopped crying immediately. There was no tears anyway. And a huge smile appeared on his face. He had won. What a wise little man he was. He knew if he grumbled, he would get his own way in the end. Now, we can learn that Jewish culture in that day probably didn't see children in such optimistic terms. The disciples may well have rebuked those bringing the children to Jesus because they felt bringing children to him was socially improper or because they thought the children would bother Jesus. Maybe the desire to stop the parents from bringing their children to him was motivated not by unkindness, but by a desire to respect Jesus' position as a teacher. Yet Jesus said he wanted the children to come to him. He said, let the children come, because he wanted to bless them. I feel this piece of scripture so shows us that Jesus has time for every person in every time of their lives. He wants everyone to be part of his kingdom. Think about it. Children are needy and dependent. They function mostly on emotion rather than reason. All young children live their lives centred on trust. When we are young, we never doubt where the next meal is to come from or where our clothes will be found. We never need to worry about bills. We trust our parents totally. That's what Jesus wants us to do with him. Trust him totally. Children believe what we tell them. They believe we will keep them safe. 
They depend totally on us, teaching them the difference between right and wrong. And that's what Jesus wants for us. Children have the most wonderful way of forgiving as well. The smile after a tantrum. The big hug after they've been scared by something and you've protected them. And that's what Jesus wants to do to us. I could go on and on about childlike qualities. They trust the person who is caring for them. They love that person unconditionally. That's what Jesus wants from us. Unconditional trust because he gives us unconditional love. Not only did he bless the children, but he told the adults, adult, adults off for trying to stop <clears throat> the children going to him. Times were pretty rough. Jesus had been to lots of different places. He had been listened to in those places. What he had to say was accepted by some and rejected by others. He was being hunted. Those who didn't like the way he challenged their comfortable lifestyle wanted him out of the way. They wanted him dead. He was recognised as a distinguished rabbi and it would have been the most natural thing in the world for Jewish mothers to bring their children to be blessed by such a man. It was something they did and still do, especially around the child's first birthday. It was their custom. It was their tradition. Their belief and trust came first. They knew in their hearts this was the best thing they could do for their children. Have them blessed by the rabbi. Jesus' command to let the little children come to me reveal several truths. One, children need to be blessed by the Lord. Two, the Lord wants to bless children. Three, parents should be encouraged to bring their children to Jesus at an early age and teach them his ways. Number four, Jesus has regard for the weakest and most vulnerable amongst us. Five, no matter how compassionate Jesus' follow, Jesus's followers are, Jesus himself is more compassionate still. And six, those who come to Christ must do so in childlike humility, faith and simplicity. Like children who implicitly trust their parents, believers trust God. Faith is not about knowing everything or doing everything right. It's about knowing that no matter what happens, our good Father in heaven will take care of us. That trust in him, even when life is terrifying and sad and makes no sense at all, is what makes a believer like a child. In John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 37, you find these words. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. See, God loves his children, young and all grown up. Now, isn't that a wonderful thought, knowing that we are loved unconditionally? Amen. Oh, mess 
We just take a few moments now to bring before God anything that we particularly want to pray for today. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.